IKEA recently partnered with ROG to launch a gaming range, and as a fan of their products, I headed down to my local IKEA to check it out. Here are my impressions. They have three new chairs in their gaming line. The cheapest is the Huvuch Spalari at 119 Singapore dollars or 69 USD. Nice. It is essentially a metal frame covered by mesh. The armrests are static and the cushioning is almost non-existent. It does come with your standard tilt lock and tilt tension controls. The main problem is the metal frame hitting the back of your neck, which is really uncomfortable. Maybe that's why they also try to sell you on a gaming neck pillow, but it makes it a little awkward to use. The $109 Utrecht Spalare is a faux leather chair, more reminiscent of the popular gaming style bucket seats. It has the standard tilt lock and tilt tension controls. The padding on the backrest is a little thin. It has the same static armrest as the Huch Spalare, and the flat headrest doesn't really provide support for your neck. Also, not really recommended. Of the three, the $259 Mush Spell is the only one that I'd recommend. The best thing about this chair is it comes with an adjustable headrest, which fits snugly on my neck. Though your own mileage may vary, so I'd recommend trying it out for yourself before you buy one. Many expensive office chair brands like the Herman Miller Aeron actually sell the headrest separately that almost make up for the price of this entire chair itself, which makes the case for the match spell in terms of value. The armrests have adequate padding, more importantly, they are adjustable up and down and front and back. There are no angle adjustments, but I find that this isn't really a huge deal. It also comes with your standard tilt lock function to adjust your recline angle, but do note that unlike the other cheaper chairs, it does not come with a knob to control tilt tension. While it doesn't have a dedicated lumbar cushion, the curve in the mesh I find is firm enough to provide decent lumbar support. I'm not a fan of the black and red aesthetic that's prevalent in ROG products, but the white version I think looks pretty cool and would work well in an all-white setup. Overall, the match spill should be a viable alternative to the more premium office chairs if you're on a tight budget. The gaming range also comes with two tables. The $229 Uta Spalari is probably the table that I'd get myself if I was in the market for a table. The gap at the back of the table and the netting below makes it convenient for cable management. It's also a good place to put your RGB strips if you're into that. The tabletop has a contour that can be oriented to face the user to get closer to the screen, or it can be oriented so that it faces the back for more cable pass-through space. The legs are height adjustable, they're not motorized, but they can be affixed to a suitable height, which is always good in terms of customization to fit your specific needs. The Oopspiel is a motorized standing desk marketed at gamers. IKEA has had height adjustable tables for a while now with their Edison or Bicant line, but this is the first product which includes the memory settings for four different heights so you don't need to press and hold to get it at the height that you want. Its adjustable height ranges from 72 to 120cm tall. The legs have some ROG styling and are really chonky, which makes it very stable. At its maximum height, it only wobbles slightly when I try to shake it intentionally, otherwise there's hardly any give. It also comes with a cable management tray underneath, which is much appreciated. It comes in at 899 Singapore dollars or you could get the underframe alone at 800 Singapore dollars. This is a departure from IKEA's usual low prices. Compared with the other popular standing desk brands in Singapore, it's about on par with the basic offerings from the Omnidesk and slightly pricier than the Everdesk. It's almost as if IKEA is trying to upsell you. Okay. The gaming range also comes with accessories, including a wooden hand that can be used as a headphone stand or as decor for your inner 12 year old. There's also a mug and a cup holder, a mouse pad, which looks good enough, but I'm concerned that the surface might peel off as the edges don't have stitching. There's also ROG branded straps and hooks for your Skydis packboard. There's supposed to be a new line of black packboards with ROG styling, but it's not in stock in Singapore. Overall, I'd say this was a decent first outing for IKEA to capture the gaming market. The gamer aesthetics are not for me, but I can see the appeal for those who are into it. Are you getting any of IKEA's gaming lineup? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.